Hello and welcome. Today we're going to block print. And because we're in lockdown, we're going to use everyday materials such as potato or polystyrene from a takeaway box or even cardboard. There's lots of things that you can experiment with at home. So here I have a polystyrene foam container, half a potato, some paper, ink from a biro coffee, and I've protected my surfaces using some cling film. I've just marked the area that I'm going to draw in using a potato so it fits onto my potato. And I'm just pivoting around, drawing two circles. I'm going to draw a vertical line, a horizontal line, a diagonal line, and another diagonal line. And can you guess what landmark I'm drawing? If you said the London Eye, you are right. And I'll draw the pods all the way around. That's where all the people sit. And I'll draw the stand, which is a triangle okay I think I'm going to try and chop a flat piece out from this takeaway container which is made from polystyrene foam I'll make sure I draw on the flat side I'm going to draw over my existing drawing to create an impression on the foam underneath and I'm going to use it as a printing block. It's important to press hard, but not too hard. It's just enough to make an impression, but not to tear through the polystyrene. Hold your piece of paper steady so you get a clear impression on the foam sheet. You may need to go over it again, just to make sure those lines are really clear, so you get a clear print. If you don't have ink or paint at home, not to worry, you can use things like coffee or ink from a biro pen to do your printing. And it works surprisingly quite well, as you will see soon. Once your plate is ready, start making your ink using some coffee and some water. Mix it thoroughly to make it into a smooth, sticky consistency. Keep mixing well until it's smooth and there are no lumps. Pick up your printing plate by the edges. Your hands may get a little bit messy here, but that's fine. Pick it up by the edges to minimize any mess. The first print is usually not very clear as it has too much ink on the plate. You may want to do this on a separate piece of paper. As you can see, there's too much ink on some parts and not enough on the other. Let's try a different, another print. much better. Let's try another. Better again. Next we'll try some ink from a biro pen, but we'll have to get that out of the pen. And you may want to ask an adult for help with this. You'll also want to protect any surfaces with cling film. And if you have gloves, it's a good idea to put them on. Just tap out all the ink from the tube. This may take a while, but keep going, you'll get there. Spread the ink out 
evenly over the cling film. Trim the plate down. Let's try start printing. So I'm going to slide it around just to get an even coverage over the plate. It kind of glides around quite nicely. Again, pick up by the edges to minimize the mess on your hands because this ink can be very messy. Stand firmly. You can use the biro as a brayer or a roller to get even pressure over the plate. This will result in a better print, as you can see. Let's try another. This time there will be less ink on the plate. Let's see how this one turns out. Very good. And a final print. Back and forth with the roller. Perfect. I think I'm going to stick that in my sketchbook. Now let's try some printing with a potato. Make sure it fits. Maybe you try to press that onto the potato itself to get an impression. Well, that didn't turn out very good, but it gives us a, an idea of what bits we're going to carve away. I'm just going to use this biro to carve parts away. You could use something like a spoon or something like a pencil to make an impression, just like we did on the foam. So I might have to work back and forth a few times just to get a good indentation on the potato. Keep working on the design. I'm just doing my horizontal and vertical lines here. This is somewhat harder than the foam, but it produces some nice results. It's getting quite messy now. But you can just wash that off, that's fine. You could also wipe away with the tissue, just so you can see what you're doing. We'll ink up that potato, just the same way as we did with the polystyrene block. So again, just moving it around, checking there's good coverage. And just pressing onto the paper. And as you can see, that produces a lovely result. And just repeat the step again. So I'm just going to have lots of London eyes. This is kind of like an abstract version of the London eye. And now I'll need the base. So I'm just going to get another potato and use scissors and of course please ask an adult for help with anything sharp like this. I'll just cut a triangle shape out. I'm going to use that as my base for my London eye. And then I think I'll try coffee next, see what that looks like. I'm really happy with the results here. So let's try with the coffee ink. That works really well with the potato because it absorbs the ink. I think you can get far more intricate designs with the foam, but the potato gives a much more even print. So maybe you could use a mixture of the two. You could also experiment with things like cardboard and cutting and sticking cardboard in layers to get different types of prints. So I'm really happy with that and you can experiment at home with everyday materials.